So hello everyone, I'm Valérie Allier. I'm a Viseo Solution Group Lead within the Video Lab of Interdigital. And I'm so glad to be here at AWE. Uh, Interdigital is a leading research, innovation and licensing company developing cutting edge wireless, video and AI technologies to unlock new potential in our connected experiences. At Interdigital, the innovation we lead today empowers incredible opportunity for the futures. And I'm excited to tell you about our research and MPEG standard contributions, technologies, along with our partner, Philips, here today. Does it work? Okay, let me take you on a journey. Close your eyes and imagine you are wearing the latest VR headset. You are slowly leaving the physical world and entering a mixed reality space. Here you can see and hear the virtual world so crisply you can almost touch it. And then you can. You can feel the sensation of the, crack of the crack of a baseball bat as you hit a home run. You can feel the closeness of a performance that is physically far away. Here, you are part of a major sporting event, immersed in the passes and plays that lead in the winning goal. Just feel the sensation of being part of the crowd. Just imagine them around you as you feel the sensation of their presence. What about streaming an e-sports event and really feeling if you were in the arena? Experiencing the sensation of the RAS care driver as they speed through a competition. Today, I will tell you about the evolution of immersive communication. From 2D to 3D and immersive video, with our fast track to sensory and haptic enhanced content. Along this story, I will explain the magic or the incredible innovation in video codec and media standards that makes immersive future a reality. So let's step, step back to understand how we got there. None of this evolution can occur without globally standard technologies. The ability to stream and communicate data-rich content to massive audience worldwide is only made possible by global video and wireless standards. Many of us can remember our first TV sitting in front of a shared screen to watch a favorite show, transmitted seamlessly to you, likely via MPEG 2D standards. A lot has changed since the early days of 2D video, and today 3D and immersive video represent the holy grail of communication. To capture the dynamic potential of immersive, we need a collaborative network with content, devices, and standards. This means uh, we need new solutions to capture immersive content. Immersive video adds volumetric depth and parallax. That requires much more data to be captured and delivered. Here I can quickly mention one of our interdigital partner, XD Production, whose Cyberdome volumetric capture capabilities are critical tool gathering this unique video content. And today, Chris will share with you more insights on live sports volumetric content capture. But this shift towards immersive media also depends on the development of, the development of new video codec standards that support large-scale deployment of this exciting content. The video codec community is be beginning to support distribution of immersive video content through the MPEG Codec V3C. 
And the last point, device manufacturers like Razer are creating new platforms to experience sensory and haptic enhanced content that you can see at our booth. If we look at examples like the Las Vegas Sphere, the Apple Vision Pro, you realize that immersive future is nearer than we can think. So before long, we can expect businesses incorporate more immersive video and haptic and non services, perhaps starting with smartphone and expand it to gaming devices, wearables, and even vehicles. But how can we make this future possible? How can we blur the lines between physical and virtual and communicate physical sensation with realism without latency? How can we scale and encourage the sharing of personalized immersive experiences across diversity of services and devices? These are the questions uh, InterDigital and Philips Engineer explore every day. And I'm proud to say that our labs are at the forefront of creating new immersive codecs, embracing volumetric video and new haptic media format to make immersive experience ex possible. Here at AWE, InterDigital and Philips showcase immersive sports experiences, addressing both volumetric live sports content delivery and the new connected gaming environment where our visitors will be able to experience the tactile sensation of a streamed live gameplay. With our joint innovations, uh, in this space. It's our goal to make streamed, volumetric, and haptic enhanced content possible for massive audience anywhere. Thanks to our contribution to these new MPEG immersive standards and our video capture technologies demonstrated at our booth, we can create an immersive sports content that can be streamed and experienced on an immersive headset on any 2D device at home at on the go. Since we also collaborate with partners such as Broadpeak to support massive delivery of immersive content with their CDN solution. And since our contribution to this content creation and distribution technologies and standards, creative people will be able to enrich their content with these new modalities. And device makers will further develop, improve the seamless immersive capabilities of their devices. So we can expect content providers of all kinds, whether it is TV, live content, movie, also education, will have the ability to enhance the distribution of large-scale consumer experiences with these exciting new sensations. So before I wanted to stop this uh, introduction, uh, announcing that our V3C immersive platform reference implementation will be soon released in early access mode in the 5G Mag reference tools uh, hosted by the 5G Mag Media Access Group. So what you will see in our, at our booth is this uh, platform allowing to uh, encode, distribute, and render in any devices volumetric video information, volumetric video uh, media, and haptic media. Providing the early access to this reference implementation will allow the ecosystem to further uh, uh, create this type of experiences, to be able to experience the transmission of the volumetric content they are able to, to create, and also for uh, XR uh, application developers to be able to incorporate volumetric information and also haptic media information. So I would like to, uh, to uh, introduce here uh, Chris Verkamp, who will uh, develop further on the technical challenges associated with immersive live sports content. Thank you. So thank you very much, uh, Valerie. Uh, my name is Chris Verkamp. I'm a scientist with uh, Philips Intellectual Properties and Standards. It's a separate business unit. 
And we focus on IP, new value creation, new, con new technology creation, and this is one of the technologies we work on. So this is the um, experience that is currently in the home. You have a big TV or you have a smartphone, and uh, you can enjoy this with your family. But it's rather limited. Um, you can extend the light to the wall. It's called Philips Envy Light, very successful product. So it makes it a bit more immersive. But you can also uh, think of a situation where you can be more immersed and even go and render scenes where you are in between the players. So this, this is what we want to achieve. With setups that are buildable and that are not too heavy and not too, uh, let's say, too time consuming to install. And these are all practical aspects that we try to solve. This is the architecture that we're currently working on. And he has a prototype for building. On the left you see a capture system that uses machine vision sensors. Those are small sensors that are typically built, uh, built and used in the industry for various purposes, low, uh, very low uh, cost sensors, but with um, high uh, fidelity. A typically global shutter that, where all the pixels are collected at the same moment in time. And they're typically synchronized, in this case also. Time synchronized in hardware, that means that we have on the microsecond level the same timestamp. All these data are then per typical per group of four or eight uh, transmitted to the cloud, uh, preferably using 5G, but you can also think of Ethernet or fiber, uh, depending on the infrastructure. But in the, in the future, I think these cameras will be integrated in the infrastructure of the stadiums, and then you won't see them. Even if you're 10 meters away, you don't see them anymore. They're small. They're like the, the, uh, the boarding, like the advertisement boarding integrated in the electronics. Um, this stream is, uh, this, these data are streamed up into the cloud. And in the cloud, there it has to happen. That means that the data are calibrated. It's not done on the field, but based on the features in the field. Data are calibrated, segmentation and recognition happens. There are also depth estimation happens, and then there's an important point where you have to create a format that's, uh, that, that will carry, let's say, for different scenarios, so for an outdoor capture system, but also for an indoor capture system with different types of sensors, hybrid with depth sensors and color cameras, capture it in one and the same format. So this format V3C, is a generic format in that it's video-based. It's supported by chip designs that are now out there. And you can pack your video, point cloud, multi-plane image, or multi-view in depth in one and the same format, such that you don't have a discussion on how that relates to the capture solution. Now, if you end up with that format, Typically, it ends up on a CDN, and at that moment in time, we're just talking about normal 2D video, and yeah, there's, there's solutions for handling with that. But on top of this normal 2D video, you have extra data, that's the metadata, that describe how the 3D is organized in this video. That is then transmitted to a client device, and the client device receives this video stream. It goes through the chip on the device, uh, to the uh, graphics unit, and after decoding, you have the frame, and there, like in graphics, a number of shaders are passed to uh, unravel the puzzle and solve the puzzle of where all the 3D objects were in space, and that's basically the rendering. So it's a video approach, but at the same time, if you augment of, or mix with Graphics, that is not a problem because you can add not limited to adding light sources and doing stuff like that. To be concrete, the, stress, uh, the system that we're building right now is evolved from a system that was not waterproof to something down there that's more robust. Modules of eight cameras we typically have, and those one single module of eight cameras is streamed to the cloud in one uh, bitstream. And multiple of those modules can be combined. And then in a scenario such as adaptive streaming, you will typically switch between those scenarios. If you go and fly around a pitch, you'll fly from one, uh, one bitstream to another bitstream, and it's, it will seamlessly be combined. 
Now, in terms of the, the properties of such a system, the system has to do auto calibration. So that means that you're not going to walk around with checkerboards in such a system. It has to withstand vibrations. So if a truck passes and the whole array starts, starts to swing, it has to account for that. Then the, the, on the rendering side, on the other side, it has to be device agnostic. And moreover, also next to the raw video data and the visual experience and the audio experience that you can get out, you can think of carrying analytics data. So in these scenarios where you segment and detect objects, you typically want to carry that information as well on the bitstream, and that's, that's possible. So you can add semantics to the bitstream, basically saying for a pixel, what was the object that actually was seen at that spot in, uh, in space. That allows for applications such as object interaction. So you can, in the video, select objects and man manipulate those objects and mix them, do depth ordering with, with other graphics. Um, the, view, the viewpoint generation is limited to a viewing space in, in these types of situations. And you can distinguish limited viewing spaces where, for instance, on a headset, you can have upper body motion, head motion parallax. You can stand or have a seated experience but in this particular example you see here on the right, you can move entirely in the space and teleport yourself to a certain location. It's limited maybe to, to 90 degrees or 180 degrees around the goal. You can imagine how that works. Um, but the viewing space is a specific uh, requirement that you have to set, set in this uh, application. Now this is an example of what we achieved with um, a soccer club in the Netherlands. This is a hybrid system, and it basically means that you are, are, are receiving a 2D video, as you would normally do on your TV or on your smartphone. But if you think that there is an interesting moment that you would like to interact with, you, you, yeah, you touch the screen and you receive the immersive representation, and you can interact with that. You could add, of course, objects to it and do a lot of more that I'm showing here, but this is the basics. You can navigate the scene. This was captured with eight cameras. Uh, if you add another module, you could fly around more, look at the goal, and these are things we are figuring out and working uh, on. This is another example that we captured indoors. Um, the, the complexity of having, let's say, two teams and, and a, a lot of people and a lot of, let's say, occluding objects and clutter, you have to solve that for a scenario here where you have only a few, then it's a lot easier. On the right-hand side, I show here that you can also extract the analytics and you could put them together with the bitstream and send them over. Uh, these are all derived from uh, the same type of data. So one particular remark uh, about the uh, rendering quality on the left. Um, the standard allows to uh, have different formats, as I mentioned, a multiplane image. It's basically a layered approach. Um, then another uh, approach is to use point cloud data and compress that. And a third approach is multi-view with depth and transparency. And the standard supports all those, and the resulting uh, atlas is, is the same for all those, in the sense that the standard or the format doesn't care what it is. It's transmitted and then rendered. Now, depending on what you want in terms of light effects and realism, uh, you can opt for one or the other. In the point cloud case, you'll probably remove light effects. But in this case, multi-view with depth, you don't have to. Because here we can calculate on the client side, we can calculate the incidence angle of a certain pixel related to a camera on a point in 3D space, and then correctly render the light effect. You can see it on the ball. It looks quite, quite realistic. So the, the original lighting effect is still available on the ball. So in this video that is transmitted according to the standard, this ball will appear in this case eight or 16 times in the Atlas from different perspectives. And during the rendering in 3D space, all those small patches are uh, combined together at the pixel level and then uh, blended uh, together uh, depending on the ray angle with respect to the 3D point. 
here's an example of analytics data that come out of such a flow. Um, if you look in, on the left here, you see that a 2D post estimator would have difficulty even isolating the two people due to occlusion. So traditional computer vision here fails miserably. For the person in the back, for sure, but also for the occluder, because there is a mix-up there. And it's really difficult to solve that in one view. Now, of course, in this picture here, you can see there is a free view of that person. If you have now, let's say, four, eight, or 16 cameras, and you're doing this whole 3D reconstruction anyhow, you might as well pass these neural networks and then over views, reconstruct in 3D, for instance, the 3D location of the knee. And that can be very precise because you have 16 views of the knee, and any bias or variance, specifically variance, is averaged out um, over views. So you can triangulate multiple times. So think of the, the situation. where you have, let's say, three views seeing this knee. You can, of course, triangulate with one and two. You can triangulate with two and three, and you can triangulate with one and three. So you have three estimates, and those estimates can be averaged, and that will increase the precision of the point. At the same time, you have to be careful, because if you had a measurement that was not correct, you have to detect that outlier. Now, in practice, we see that this can be rather precise, and we'll show that here. Wait a second, go back here. Yeah, this is the one. How do I start the video? That's the question here. Yeah? Maybe like this. Yeah, this is, so if you see here on the right, the skeletons are rather stable. Sometimes it uh, still jitters, but we, don't, we didn't filter over time. But you can see that the ball and the players are really geometrically correct, generating the top view. So to summarize, we uh, talked about sports, and it's a relevant use case for immersive experiences. And photometric video capture and standardization is essential. We want to facilitate both indoor captures conditioned on uh, green screens and backlights, but also in the wild. And in the wild, with the wild, we mean outdoor, unconstrained cameras everywhere and combine it. Philips is developing a complete pipeline. Uh, now we were now working on an AWS implementation of the algorithms that will allow to do real-time uh, streaming and playback on your uh, devices. An important aspect in this whole flow is interoperability, and we make sure that that is done using the existing MPEG standards, so that yeah, the, the larger industry, and with larger, I mean larger than just XR, also uh, takes your effort seriously. Uh, leveraging existing codecs, obviously, because the chip manufacturers will not build a chip specifically for uh, immersive in this case when it concerns video. Thank you very much.